Hey class, it is Mrs. Gilling here, and we are about to go over your Unit 2 video assignment all about applying the scientific method to a project that you're going to complete. But before we do that, here is the joke of the unit. All right, a client comes for his first therapy session. He has a small cucumber up his nose, a carrot in his left ear, a banana in his right ear. Can you help me figure out what's wrong with me? He asks the therapist. The therapist replies, you're not eating properly. <laughs> Get it? Because that's not how we eat. All right, you know you love them. They may be corny, but you know you love the joke of the unit. Okay, if you don't love the joke of the unit, let's talk about your project then. So for your project in, in unit two, which is your first project, you have two options. So the first option is this one is the one that's found in the course. So if you just went through the course like normal, it's what would pop up and what you would do. So project option number one. This project is your chance to imagine being a psychological scientist. Imagine you have made an observation in your everyday life. After arguing with your sister, we never argue with our siblings, right? Okay, I did a little bit. I argued a little bit with my siblings. After arguing with your sister, you seem to calm down more quickly when sitting in your living room. Your living room is painted blue, and you recall that blue is supposed to be a calming color. Is this true? You want to find out for yourself if people feel calmer after they see the color blue. You want to find the answers to this question. Does the color blue make people feel calmer? So that's your background information. Here's what you'll do for your project. So with those questions in mind, you're going to start off with two multiple choice questions. And each of the multiple choice questions is worth 10 points. And here's a little sneak preview here. You already have the questions. So when you go into the project, I had last quarter, I had a few people quite a few people that that didn't like research the answers in the in the readings and they just kind of answered on the top of their head and they got them wrong. There's no reason to get these wrong because you have the readings right there in the in our text in our uh, our text information in the course. And so you know what the questions are. So if, when you do this project, go look up the answers and bring them with you and then answer with with the material right there. It's not cheating on a project to have your answers there. So I really we have these questions in there to make sure you understand what the scientific method is and to make sure you understand what systematic replication is. So don't miss these questions. And if you do, it's okay. I'll give you a second chance, but don't miss these questions. So first multiple question, most multiple choice question, excuse me, that's going to pop up for you is in order, what are the four steps involved in the scientific method? And the second one is what is systematic replication? So those are your multiple choice questions. After that, you're going to, in the course, you're going to have some short answer responses that pop up, and each of these are worth 20 points. The first one is, your research question is, does the color blue make people feel calmer? Using what you have learned about the scientific method, explain in two to three sentences what your hypothesis is for your research question and how you could test your hypothesis. So something really important here. A hypothesis and the research question are different. A hypothesis is not written in the form of a question. So in the past, some students have said, the research question is, does the color blue make people feel calmer? And my hypothesis is, does the color blue make the people feel calmer? You make a statement in your hypothesis. So you take a stand, what do you think's going to happen? So your, your hypothesis is either gonna be, uh, the color blue will make people feel calmer, or the color blue will not make people feel calmer. And then your, test is the experiment or survey, whatever you're going to do to see if that's true, to see if your hypothesis is right or not. So be, be specific in your test. You know, what, who are, who are you going to test? What kind of people are you going to test? What are you going to do for your test? Give as much detail as you can to, to show that you understand how to test a hypothesis. In the next one, in two to three sentences, describe how you could ensure your test will have external validity. So how can you make sure that the test you came up with can be applied to a different group of people? How can you make sure that your test isn't only valid in your little project, but how it could be valid in, in another situation? And if you don't understand external validity, there's some great resources in the readings that explain that. And you can also reach out to me and, and we can talk about it. The next one, imagine that you tested 20 high school students, 15 male, 5 female. 12 males and 4 females reported feeling a calming effect after exposure to the color blue. In two to three sentences, explain what conclusions could be drawn from this information. So that's just a pretend scenario that pretend you did your test. These are the results you came out with. 
what does this mean? Does the color blue have a calming effect or doesn't it? What, what other information? Just all the conclusions you could draw from that, list them out there in two to three sentences. And again, be specific. And then the last question, imagine that you tested 20 high school students, 15 male, five female. 12 males and four females reported feeling a calming exposure to the color blue. In two to three sentences, explain how you could repeat this test in a different way to prove that the design was internally valid and reliable. So you're going to study all about validity and reliability in this course. And so what can you do to prove that your test is valid and reliable? And again, if you have questions on that, let me know. So when you're graded on these, you're going to be graded on, on accuracy. Did you accurately answer the information? Were you using course material to show that you you understand what you're talking about and that your, your answers are essentially correct on accuracy? You will be graded on completion. Did you answer all parts of the question? So if it says, you know, what is your hypothesis and what is your test? Don't just list your hypothesis. You need to also list the test. Be, be complete here and also make sure you're writing the two to three sentences. Don't do bullet points, do full sentences, write it kind of in paragraph form. And then you're also going to be graded on your grammar. It's really important to make sure you're, you, know, you have correct punctuation, correct capitalization, correct word usage. This is professional work, right? We want to make sure it looks professional. So you will be graded on your grammar as well. So that's where those points kind of get broken down. So that's, that's your first step and your first project option, excuse me. And again, it's the one that's built in the course. If you just go straight through, this is what it is. Here's your second option. So project option number two, come up with your own psychological research question and hypothesis and figure out a way to test it. Perform the test and, reclude your, and include your results in a slideshow presentation. So last quarter, some of the students came to me with ideas that they had, like, oh, it'd be really fun to, to try this experiment or to... I observed this and I kind of interested about it. If there's something psychologically based out there that, that you're interested in and you'd like to perform a little bit of a test to, to see if it could be true, then go for it. This is your option opportunity to, to kind of branch out on your own if you have an idea and, and do it. So the only thing is you got to make sure that it's, it's psychology based. You can't just be like a math experiment or a science experiment. Make sure it's, it's a psychological one, kind of about human behavior, that sort of thing. So you know, maybe you notice that people who drive red cars have more friends. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. But maybe you made that observation and you want to see if it's true. So you come up with a test to, to test something like that. Or maybe people who eat vegetables are happier and you want to see if, if that's true. So whatever whatever is interesting to you, I want you to, to explore that. You will complete the steps and record your information in a Google slideshow or PowerPoint presentation. Instead of submitting the project in the course, you can give me the link to your presentation in the comment section instead. You can also email your project to me. So this section is not, this project option isn't the one that's built into the course. So you're still going to have to click through the other one but you, if you choose this option. But you don't have to, to complete the steps of it. You can just kind of click through and then the comment section you can give me the link to your project or you can include it in one of the answer sections. Just say, I'm not doing this option. I'm choosing option number two and here's my, my link. If that doesn't work well for you, you can also email it to me and I can grade it from there. So here's what you'll be doing for the project if you choose this option. So first of all, you'll need to send me an email or IM with your proposed research question, your hypothesis, and the test you're going to perform for approval. I just want to make sure that you're on the right track, that it's psychology based. And I don't, I would hate for you to go through a whole project and then come back and it didn't work out for your grade. So that's, that's an easy 10 points. Just send me that, that I am or email listing what you would like to do. And I will get back to you and say yes or no. And I'll get back pretty quick so you can get working on it. Then you're going to make your, your slideshow as you, after you've done your experiment. So in your first slide, you're going to list your research question and hypothesis. So pretty simple. Second slide, describe how you will test your hypothesis. Be specific on this. So how many people are involved in your test? What are the ages? What's, what are the, the gender of the people that you're testing? You know, how many male, how many female? Be very specific. What are you going to do? And what are the people like you're going to use for your experiment? On the next slide, after you've done your test, after you've tested your hypothesis, list your results. So what did you observe that happened? On the next slide, you're going to answer the following questions. First, did your test have external validity? And then why or why not? 
On the next one, for slide five, you're going to answer this question. How could you repeat your test in a different way to prove that the design was internally valid and reliable? And then another thing you'll be graded on is your appearance. So you want to make sure that your slideshow looks nice, right? We don't just want to have a boring white background and just words thrown on a screen. So you want to make sure that you choose a theme for your slideshow. So there's some, some color, some fun going on there and that you include at least three pictures in your slideshow. You'll also need to double check your grammar and spelling. And so that's worth 15 points. Each of the slides are worth 15 points and then 10 points for sending it in for approval. This is a, a fun option if you have something you're interested in on your own and you'd like to, to test it out. But I, it doesn't matter to me which one you choose. I think they're both great. They both help me see that you understand the scientific method. They're both fun. So whichever one you choose is awesome. But if you have any questions, as always, please reach out to me. Let me know. I'm here for you. You can IM me, email me, call me, text me. I don't know. Maybe send a carrier pigeon or something. Who knows? Whatever. I'll respond. I'll try. So thanks, guys, for watching this video. If you have any questions, I'm here. Other than that, we will catch you next time. Have a good one.